Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Layla Saad. Please make sure you are subscribed. I put out videos weekly about all things life. Just life, you know, life. And today, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Talk about life. More specifically, body image, body positivity, self-love, self-talk, self-care, all the good stuff. Originally, took a shower this morning, got ready for the video, had a mental breakdown, went for a walk, ran some errands, and now we're back. I actually re-showered, decided to take off some of my makeup. Why do my hair? It's a video about self-love. So, what you see is what you get, except I did my brows. I did write notes because I really wanna make sure I get through everything for this video. So basically what it's going to be is I'm gonna talk a little bit about my personal struggles with body image, and then I'm gonna go into five quotes, tips, mantras that I've heard or learned throughout the years that have helped me. I just feel like right now, it's kind of a weird time. Like we went from a uh, quarantine to summer. And I know a lot of girls and probably some guys are in the same boat, but it's a little bit like mind boggling because you've just been sitting inside, not <laughs> having to get ready, not really worrying about what you're wearing or feeling comfortable in your body. And then all of a sudden it's like summer and it's like bathing suits and going out and dresses and shorts and everything like that. And I know that personally, I've been freaking out a little bit about everything. I've talked to a lot of like my friends and people I've connected with on Instagram and whatnot. And it seems like that's a really general consensus going on right now. So I thought this would be a good time to put out this video right before the 4th of July. Just kind of go over some things that you can take with you. So if you've ever felt self-conscious or concerned about what you look like, this is the video for you. So stay tuned. Okay, so I think I'm going to start the video going off of kind of my personal struggle. So kind of how I got to where I am. Unfortunately, I'm sure a lot of girls can relate when I say my perception of what I looked like, whether I'm pretty or skinny, started really, really young. And for any guys watching this, you might be shocked at how young girls start thinking about this stuff. But I think my first memory was being probably eight years old, hearing girls talking about how much they weigh at the lunch table in literally center school. So like grades three to five. I think it was eight years old when I realized that, oh, everyone's talking about how much they weigh and I just happened to weigh a close 15 to 20 pounds heavier than all the girls that I'm sitting with. And, you know, I started to learn like, I was like, that doesn't seem right. That doesn't make me feel good. I was always tall for my grade, my age, and I just was always bigger. You know, even in third grade, I remember like being jealous of other girls. It just starts so young. And these things are so embedded in our society and how we grow up. It's sickening, honestly. And it's so scary to think about having to raise a daughter in the society because so much of it is not even taught, it's just learned and they can't unlearn it for a long time. Obviously going into middle school, I think middle school for all girls is like so scary. <laughs> like being, I can't even, you couldn't pay me to go back to middle school. And again, I was still always like bigger than all my friends. And I just had this connotation in my head, like, oh, I'm just like, I'm the big friend. Like that's just how I perceived myself. And obviously that is a really hard thing to deal with and feel, especially in middle school when you're learning that like your worth sometimes is felt like it's by like attention or what people think of you and like your, your status and things like that start to come into play play and a lot of people are really mean <laughs> and unfortunately you know I just surrounded myself with some people that made me feel bad about myself and essentially by some people that I cared about it was like I was being bullied for my weight and I wasn't really into sports I wasn't really athletic so that wasn't something I took very seriously and then once I got to high school I feel like it got maybe a little bit better but when i was a sophomore i think i had like my first boyfriend and then he broke up with me and i you know me being 15 i'm like oh the obvious reason that he broke up with me had to have been because i wasn't skinny and that kind of sucks but that's you know 15 year old me that was like the only option so i started to go to the gym and i started to change my diet at 15 i stopped eating ramen noodles and bagels and I would make salads and eat 
bags of carrots and run for miles on the treadmill. And then slowly I got more into fitness. So like my mom actually taught me how to like use the machines and the weights at like a Planet Fitness. And then I got really, really into that. And that was kind of my thing since I wasn't good at sports. I channeled my energy into going to the gym and that ended up becoming a really big part of who I was, really into health and fitness. Going into college, I majored in nutrition and I was very, very much into going to the gym. And not that there was anything wrong with that, but there was definitely a lot of restrictions I put on myself, a lot of things I missed out on and even at my best shape, lowest weight, I still didn't feel good about myself. I was still always nitpicking. I still always thought I was like the biggest one out of my friends. Like this connotation in my head was always there and it really sucked. And then I, you know, wasn't hanging out with my friends and I wasn't really exploring in college. And then eventually some things changed for me and slowly but surely fitness and nutrition started to go, they just put on the back burner for me. I started to go out more and eat more freely, do whatever I wanted. It just started to get pretty unhealthy for me. You know, as the months and months went by, my eating got worse and then I would restrict myself and I'd feel so bad about myself thinking like, oh, I wish I looked like I did last year or the year before. The restricting led to like binge eating and restricting and binging and restricting and it was just like this huge thing. And then junior year, I started to get really sad. I just started to eat more, felt worse about myself. It's so bad that I almost didn't even want to go to the gym, but it really wasn't until probably in my senior year, it definitely got a lot better. I started to notice, but still, again, this stuff is so engraved in your mind. It definitely was still struggling, but I definitely feel like I'm getting a lot better and there's a lot of things that have really helped me. So I'm gonna go over what has helped me, what, what things have changed for me. I think once I started to think differently about the world as a whole and kind of my place in the world, my connection to just like my future and everything, I think I just started to feel more connected to my actual mind and my soul, which has helped me because I kind of realized like what really matters, what doesn't matter. And so I think the more I find other things that matter to me, the less that what other people think about me or my body or anything like that really does matter to me. Obviously doing everything I'm doing right now, like even just starting a YouTube channel, it, I probably wouldn't have done that three years ago because I would have been so worried what other people think. But I think just this feeling of not really giving up anymore has really helped me and that's traveled into my body image as well. So I'm gonna go into five self-care, self-love, body positivity quotes ideas, things that have helped me. So hopefully they something might resonate with you. Okay, so my first one is your opinion is the only one that matters. So no matter, I know I've said this before, but no matter what you do, what you look like, people are going to have an opinion. You could have you could have the body that you've always dreamed of and people are still going to judge you and nitpick you. That alone should kind of lead you in a direction to like, okay, no matter what you do, people are gonna judge. So why not just do what you want to do? Again, this could be like, maybe your opinion is that, you know, you don't like ready or not. It's understandable people have those feelings, but you have to take a step back and be like, why do I feel this way? What am I looking at here? You know, why do I feel this way about my body? And then a lot of the times you might realize like, oh, well, this person's doing this or this one doing this one and this comparison is really what's eating away at you and when you trace it back a lot of times that leads back to just other people's opinions and thinking that other people care about you or care about what you look like when in reality they really don't they really don't and like even if they did for like a slight second have some sort of judgment about your body well what what does it matter you know it's not like they're gonna tell you like oh i can see your cellulite and then like tomorrow you're gonna be like oh well, i don't have cellulite anymore so it's not gonna happen. Probably won't tell you anyways, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and then I also wrote, yeah, I just wrote people will judge you for everything. If you are that judgmental person in your mind, always tearing people down, urge you to kind of look back at yourself and think of like, why am I doing that? And does it really make you feel better when you recognize somebody else's flaws? Especially if you see somebody and you see like a flaw and you can tell they don't care. You shouldn't be judging them for it. You should actually be applauding them for it. The fact that they have that confidence to go out and not really give up. I don't know about you, but that's something that I always celebrate and I'm always all for it. I'm here for it. Do you, if you feel comfortable, do it, rock it. 
that I just wrote someone's always going to be better than you realistically someone's always going to be smarter than you someone's always going to be more successful than you someone's always going to be prettier than you editing queen what i'm saying here is there's always going to be more and more you're always going to want more there's always going to be somebody who's prettier than you there's always going to be someone who's better than you if you aren't able to accept where you are now and who you are now you aren't going to be happy even if you do reach whatever your goal you're looking for you have to learn to be happy with what you have now because you can keep going more and more and more it's never going to be enough and that applies to everything beyond body image but it's so important but there's also a lot that those people wish they had that you might have or you know there's things about you that are special i know this is like a quote i've heard before but just because they're pretty doesn't mean you aren't tip number one your opinion is the only one that matters i don't know why i'm drinking this matcha from dunkin donuts absolutely never again okay sorry all right number two is i guess i didn't really have a mantra for this or like a quote but i just wrote living life to the fullest so being self-conscious literally destroys memories and opportunities if you're spending all day worrying about what you look like and your appearance when you're out doing something you're not going to remember that as a fun experience. You're not going to remember that day or that night or that vacation as, you know, memorable and exciting. You're going to remember that you were so miserable in your body, you couldn't enjoy it. And I know for me personally that it does really help me to think of how much joy and happiness and positive energy I'm missing out on just because I'm worrying about something that in the long run really doesn't matter. You know, the fact that you get to be in an opportunity, in a place where you get to build something memorable and exciting can help motivate you to not give a f That's what I got. And then just think of like the people that you're around, like think about how much more infectious your energy is when it's positive rather than negative. Depending on who you're around, like you're just, you could feel really lonely in that situation because of the fact that it's just like you in your own head. So just think about like 20 years down the line, are you going to want to remember this trip as a trip where you wanted to stay in your room the whole time, not go swimming, not run on the beach, not, I don't know, wear a cute floral skirt or whatever you want to do. I don't know. Just wear a pink top regardless of what your arms look like. Wear a crop top regardless of what your stomach looks like. If you feel good and you feel comfortable and you feel like that's you, you're not like trying to be something else, do it. Do your thing and have freaking fun. Make those memories. All right, number three. So I just saw this one on Instagram. I will post their Instagram handle, but it was all about self-talk. And it was the this quote of replace your but with and in terms of kind of talking to yourself. So the example that I came up with for myself is if I say I'm creative, curious, optimistic, but sometimes I'm selfish and insensitive. Instead of saying I'm creative, curious, optimistic, and sometimes selfish and insensitive. Just because sometimes I have flaws and I'm insensitive or selfish does not discount my positive attributes. This but can be super dismissive to my qual positive qualities and the way that we talk to ourselves is really really important because if I'm constantly disregarding my positive traits to make sure that I always remember my negative traits then that's obviously going to harbor my self-confidence down the line. I think just adding in those negative flaws to your kind of I am statements can be beneficial because you can accept it you can recognize it, you can be cognizant of it. As long as you're being present in your relationships and environment to respect others, it's okay that you have th certain things that you might wanna work on. It doesn't discount your positive traits. I keep saying that, I can't think of another way to say it, but plus there are some like things that you might think are a flaw that other people are actually extremely envious of that because they're working on it they want to be have more of that trait and you know you might be able to use some of your flaws to your advantages there's always a give and take everybody is so different and just because you know sometimes you can be too sensitive or sometimes you can be uptight or judgmental it doesn't discount the fact that you have plenty of other things what's another word for discount it doesn't disregard 
loophole doesn't disregard that there's a lot about you to be grateful for okay the next one i've definitely talked about before but it's been really really crucial to me in kind of my own personal journey i do deem myself a spiritual person and this one to me really connects with me so it's that your body is a vessel for your mind and i wrote about it before on my instagram but this one really speaks to me if you were to think of this body as simply as possible as it is legitimately just a body that is holding your mind which is true you it can get pretty deep into a more spiritual lens about this quote but you have so many gifts in your mind you have things that others long for kind of going off of what i just talked about you know your gifts your uniqueness your creativity your intelligence your thoughts your love your ability to care for others your work ethic your organization skills i don't know something about you is really really cool and really special and you're good at it it comes naturally to you and it's something beneficial that you give to the world you spread to others it comes it shows through and it's something that allows you to feel more connected to other people or help other people there's something about you that is unique on this planet on this earth in this universe and that's something to be celebrated because it's coming through your body and when i say like your body is a vessel for for your mind i mean seriously you wouldn't be able to love the way you do you wouldn't be able to connect with the people that you connect with if it wasn't for your body you know you can't really just be like a floating circle of consciousness i mean maybe you can but i'm not at that level yet <laughs> when i remember those things it's almost like that appreciation for your body like i'm thankful that i have this body to be able to explore to experience this life to wake up every single morning to watch the sunrise to go in the water to go on a hike to read a book to meet somebody new to create art there's so many things that wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for our bodies and some people you know maybe you love some sort of fitness maybe you love you know weight training or cycling or yoga and all of this has to do with your body being able to provide an experience for you and that I think is so powerful because I like I like who I am. I like myself. I like my mind. I like what I have to bring to the table. And that's why this one works for me. This is kind of more of like that self-love. I do like myself. Obviously, I have things that I could work on. It's not like I'm sitting here being like every day I wake up and I'm like, wow, I'm the best human ever. Like, no, there's some things I can work on. And I want to treat my body with respect. Just when you think about those traits that you have, you want to protect them. You want to be able to continue to give those to share your positive qualities. And to do that, you know, we have to love our bodies. We have to treat our bodies like somebody that we love. You know, nourish them, move them, rest them, and listen, you know, listen to your bodies. Think of your body as somebody that you love. Don't disregard what they're trying to tell you. If something doesn't feel right, then something might not be right. Listen to your body, love your body like you love your mind. Okay, and the last one is thanks to my girl, Jess, and the book she's reading the erroneous mind i asked just kind of something that might have helped her with her body image or things along those lines and she shared with me this audible snippet from this book and i thought it was really helpful and simple that i feel like some people might just grasp this one better than the other ones but just what's the point literally what's the point what's the point in disliking yourself what's the point in Disliking your body. What's the point in disliking your flaws mentally or physically? What's the point in this dislike? Because all that you're doing is you're cultivating negative energy and you're storing it in your entire being. Everything that you are, you're storing and building up all this negative energy and negativity. And that comes through in so much. That comes through in your relationships. That comes through in your jobs. That comes through in blocking your creativity. That comes through in your self-doubt. All this negativity comes out in different ways and all it does is harbor you from actually getting to where you want to be. 
you cannot operate from your highest potential or your best self if you're looking as, at your body as an error or like a mistake. Dislike, I wrote, quote, disliking yourself is a burden. It's just causing extra struggle for you that you do not need. This struggle, when I know when I feel bad about myself, actually the last thing I want to do is work out. The last thing I want to do is eat healthy and or eat enough or eat too much or whatever, what have you. It's really just a distraction. And when you think of it like that, if you have clear goals for yourself, this whole means of disliking yourself is really what's holding you back. And subconsciously, you may not even know it, but this idea that it's holding you back is almost sometimes your mind protecting you. Sometimes your mind just wants to keep you in this little box and keep you having the same struggles that you've always had. They don't really want you to succeed. And it's really, really subconscious, but it happens to all of us. And I know this is something that has definitely held me back over the past year or so, is this feeling that I'm running in circles. And I know that there's like this deeper feeling inside me that's kind of holding me back. And the, the harder I think about how much I don't want something, the more of that negative energy I attract and the more of what I don't want comes into my life. And to really work at your optimal capacity, to really work at your maximum potential, you have to dec decrease this internal burden that you're making with yourself. It doesn't need to be there. There's no point in it. It's not helping you. And when you kind of take a look at that, I think that's really powerful to just think to yourself, like, what's the point? Going back on everything I just talked about too, you know, what's the point? You're missing out on exciting memories. Like, what's the point? Your opinion's the only one that matters. What's the point? They're going to have an opinion anyways. As, as easy as it is to kind of always look for problems, it's almost like falling back into a trap. It's like, taking seven steps forward and then getting kicked back eight just because you look in the mirror and you're falling back into your old ways. Think of it as every other thing that could be negative. I'm trying to think specifically, but any time that you've ever wanted to overcome something, it gets harder and there's a lot of things inside your mind that try to hold you back into this little box. It's hard to overcome, but the more that you think about these few things, these tips, these ideas that, you know, your body is a vessel for your mind and that it's okay to have flaws and it's okay to accept who you are. I think slowly but surely, the initial feeling of trying to think of these things and looking for these things and they slowly kind of fade away and you start to not care anymore, but it's not gonna happen overnight. You know, I'm still working on it. Yes, I do think that I am improving, but I still definitely feel uncomfortable when I'm getting ready, you know, certain things not fitting me is a difficult feeling and I think anybody, male or female, can attest to that and understand why that can feel a little disheartening. But you know, I'm still working on it and I'm glad that I'm still healthy and no matter what I look like, I understand that my healthy is different from someone else's healthy because there was a time where I'm counting my macros and working out seven days a week and I'm still looking differently than other girls who aren't doing anything at all. You know, everyone's bodies are different. And I think accepting that for myself was a huge stepping stone. You know, there are certain things about yourself that you will come to accept and in a perfect world, learn to love. But also at the same time, just because you have self-love or body positivity doesn't mean you really do need to love these things you've come to accept that sometimes is unrealistic when it comes to these things. Like self-appreciation, body appreciation is fantastic. Thinking of all the things that your body does for you is fantastic. But when it comes to love, like, am I ever gonna love my cellulite? Um, probably not. I just sound like Donald Trump, probably. <laughs> Um, no, probably I'm not going to. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna wear a bathing suit. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna wear shorts. I'll do it and people will probably notice, whatever. So do most people. And that feeling is like freeing because why does it matter? If you're the one judging me for having cellulite, then there's something else going on in your life that you gotta figure out and that's okay. 
everyone has a lot going on. So at the end of the day, do you live your life to its fullest potential and what your body looks like unless it's physically holding you back from being able to live your life if you're still able to do all of these things even if you're not there's still so much that it does for you you know if you're watching this then your body is working for you and sometimes you have to work for it too and sometimes you need to treat it differently treat it better if things aren't act if things aren't working right you're not feeling good physically there are things that you'll ch you'll need to change but when it comes down to it as long as you feel healthy or you know eating healthy or eating enough at least you should be really really grateful for what your body does for you and this feeling of gratitude for your body that you're in and like this vessel for your mind and soul is really really beautiful and powerful so i challenge all of you watching this to take some steps towards thinking about positive qualities within your mind the ways that you love yourself internally and how you wouldn't be able to do those things you wouldn't be able to give that to others if it weren't for the body that you're in you wouldn't be able to experience the things that you love to experience or do the hobbies that you love to do without the body that you're in and that alone is a huge huge piece of the puzzle so you know next time you look in the mirror and you're not feeling fantastic think whatever who cares and if they do care come you know <laughs> now i know this is all easier said than done but it's a slow steady process you'll have ups and downs you'll have breakdowns but at the same time it's so worth it because your quality of life matters these memories matter this time in your life matters and if you're not doing it for you do it for the people around you your energy is infectious and if you're always worrying about what you look like and your body and what other people think it's infectious and eventually it's going to start hurting your relationships and your ability to spread love and make connections and it can be a really slippery slope so that is all i have for you guys thank you for watching so so much i will link some things in the description some resources some journal prompts some things for you if you are on this journey and i want to preface this so much but feel free to dm me or comment if you share any struggles that you've had if anything i said relates to you you have any questions if there's anything you'd like me to elaborate on i'm more than happy to go into detail if you feel like you have a unique situation i would love to send you some personal resources just kind of help out i think that everybody deserves to feel comfortable and really honestly as cliche as it sounds really does deserve to feel beautiful everyone deserves that feeling and it's so liberating to not care what people think so liberating and I can promise you that it's worth the effort. All right. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you next week.